brothers and sisters we will now see module 1 of the course sagodara sagodarigale nam tagaval padugappu paadathin mudal bhagathai paarpom bhayam bahano hum ab suchana suraksha paath ke pratham bhag mein pravesh karenge sagodara sagodarigale ippol namakku onnam bhagathai nokam tamma tangigale ಈಗ ನಾವು ಒಂದನೇ ಭಾಗ ನೋಡೋಣ ಪ್ರೇಮೈನ ಅಣ್ಣಲು ಅಕ್ಕಲು ಮಣಂ ಇಪ್ಪುಡು ಮೊದಟಿ ಭಾಗಂ ಚೂಸ್ತಾಮು ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮಾಡ್ಯೂಲ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಇನ್ಫರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಟಿ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ರಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಬುಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಬ್ಸೈಟ್ಸ್ principles of information security by witman et al and then we have also used some materials from the university of oregon and thanks to isaka for the covid and we thank all the authors for the slides provided with the book and also on the website some of which we are using in in this presentation the rules of this course you are you should ask questions through discussion forums and feel free to ask any question your perspective may be different or more apt than mine correct me if i make a mistake remember i am in a continuous learning mode do not take notes this slide deck will be available on the web and finally please make sure your cell phones are in shivering mode your chat window in busy mode so that you give undivided attention to understand the course now we just want to reiterate the learning objectives upon completion of this lecture you should be able to understand what information security in the modern day context and also in early days it was called computer security how it evolved into information security understand many key terms and critical concepts of information security of modern day and most importantly understand the way a organization which is it driven the it management of an organization what would be the organogram of that organization who would be responsible for doing what all these four objectives are very important to appreciate information security and each of these objectives will have some subtle concepts i hope many of you know burton russell so burton russell came out with a small statement very very small he is very much well known for very small jargons or very small statements is that obviousness is the enemy of correctness many of the things that we will be teaching in this course or will be debating in this course are obvious things which are not followed and because of that we land up with issues so we will be teaching you the obvious things in and what it means if you don't if you neglect those things in the global scenario so this is what would be our learning objectives this course as mentioned earlier has six modules this is sub module of module 1 and what we will be discussing in the entire module 1 would be what is information security why do you need it then cia is a very very important term in information security which basically talks about confidentiality integrity and availability and to bring this confidentiality integrity and availability into the information security system there are lot of things that need to be done and what you see in the three bullet points that follow or those that are necessary to build in confidentiality integrity and availability into a system for example policies procedures guidelines standard from a security perspective what are all the administrative measures and technical measures needed to enforce these three the cia which are basically the foundations of information security 
or the goals of information security. We also look at people, process and technology. People are the, are the ones who follow a process and these processes are implemented by technology. So security should be addressed at the technology level and the process which uses this technology and the people who actually uses these processes. So there is lot of information, lot of, lot of disciplines and policies and procedures that people, that, that need to be implemented at each one of these stages, namely at the people level, at the process level and technology level. And this module will talk deeply about that. Now we are talking about Kevin Mitnick, who is actually a hacker. Actually, he was a cyber criminal and he was actually captured by, uh, arrested by FBI. He came back and he became one of the uh, world's, uh, um, <coughs> uh, one of the world renowned computer security expert. And uh, <coughs> he came out with this very interesting statement. Again, it's a very obvious statement. People are the weakest link. This is this particular phrase is known for decades now that whenever I there is a security lapse, majorly may, it is going to be because of people's unawareness about certain security measures. Though we know that people are the weakest link, many, many organizations do not actually invest in educating the people on the issues of security. So this is Kevin Mitnick's statement that you read on the screen. You can have the best technology, firewalls, intrusion detection systems, biometrics devices, and somebody can, but somebody can call an unsus unsuspecting employee. But all is that if a small leak from the, peop uh, from the employee side, the human error or human carelessness, that could essentially kill your entire system. And this is reality. <coughs> so Jim Anderson came out with this very interesting definition of information security. Especially in today's enterprise world where we have huge data centers, it is nothing but a well-informed sense of assurance that the information risks and controls are in balance. For every risk, I have a way to control that. I take a risk, I have enough checks and balances to control it. So if that assurance is given, then your information is actually secure. And this is the definition that was given by Jim Anderson. Now we go into some history of information security because we have to learn the lessons of the past to go and appreciate the present and the future. The computer, computer security basically began, that time it was computer security, it began immediately after the first mainframes were developed. There were groups developing code breaking computations during World War II, which created the first modern computers. Physical controls at that point to secure these computing inf uh, uh, machines, which actually stored some information which is very sensitive. There were no network, but they had some lot of physical controls. Essentially, they want to physically secure the system. Physically secure means it should not be broken, manually damaged. It should not be taken out of a place. It should be under lock and key. So the physical controls were readed to limit, author, uh, limit access to authorized persons to sensitive memory locations. And only rudimentary controls were available to defend against this physical theft, espionage and sabotage. The Enigma was the first German computer which was actually used for sending coded message. So here is a small description of Enigma. So the entire notion of security started with the Advanced Research Project Agency, ARPA, which began examining 
the feasibility of a redundant network communications. This was basically headed by Larry Roberts who, was the, who has developed the project from its inception. Larry Roberts is known for his contribution to the internet. So, if you just look at the ARPANET program plan, the program plan was to basically share, if you carefully look into it, the objective was to develop networking and resource sharing. So, when this is the first notion where computers, where the resources available on multiple computers were shared. The ARPANET actually grew in popularity between the 70s and the 80s as and so were the potentials for misuse. The fundamental problem with ARPANET security were identified at that point. First and foremost, there was no safety procedures for dial-up collections and user identification and the authorization to the system were non-existent. So, in the late 1970s, the microprocessor expanded computing capabilities and security threats. So, the ARPANET which was connecting these microprocessor essentially brought in a notion of security wherein somebody dials up a connection, is he an authentic person, is he authorized to develop, dial up that connection and somebody starts using the system, does he have the necessary identification and authorization and these are all something which became issues with the ARPANET and this started as early as 1970s and 80s. Then came out the R609 which is called the RAND report which formed the first report on computer security. The scope of computer security grew from physical security to include safety of the data, limiting unauthorized access to the data and also involvement of personnel from multi levels of the organization and each having some specific authorization to use the computers at with some level of uh, security. So, if you look at what happened immediately after world war was that people were more interested in having the computer at lock and key, there was no notion of sharing the resources between computers and slowly came the ARPA where people started sharing the systems and the moment they started sharing, then the issues of is the correct fellow logging into the system, is he dialing up, is he using the data. So, more than the physical security of the computer, people started realizing even in the late 70s and early 80s that the data in the computer can be stolen without physically accessing the computer and that the first notions of that was reflected in this RAND report R609. In the 1990s, networks of computers became more common in the civilian sector and so, so did the need to interconnect the networks. So, this resulted in a massive global network which we today call as the internet, but in those days still in this large scale internet deployments, security unfortunately was treated as a low priority because information that is stored in the computer can be sensitive is a field which people did not realize much during those time. They thought a network is basically used for sharing the resources and data also became something that some can, someone can share and they wanted to share the data. But there are, there are going to be unshareable data within a system is something a realization which did not immediately occur to the people of the early 1990s. And that is why when you look at large scale internet deployments of those days, security was still given a low priority. The present the internet has brought millions of computer networks into communication with each other and many of them are still unsecured. So, the ability to secure each 
now influenced by the security on every computer to which it is connected. As I mentioned in my welcome talk, a mistake done by one system, a vulnerability on one system can launch a massive denial of service attack on the entire LAN. And this is something that one need to be careful. And so the present system requires a large scale awareness and discipline in system usage to bring uh, things under control. So what is today's environment? Look at all these, why Skype, eBay, YouTube, Blackberry, Facebook, Amazon, iPhone, LimeWire, iPad, Google. The word Google has actually become a verb. Hey, do you want something? Google it. Right? So, today, so many organizations have trillions and trillions of data and millions and millions of users communicating using this data and that everyone wants some level of security and privacy and confidentiality and availability. Now, the entire gamut of information security is to, is to come out with a policy, a process, a procedure, a technology which will go and enable a major secure feeling and assurance. It will give you a major secure assurance to these millions and millions of users about the privacy, availability, confidentiality, integrity of the trillions of trillions of data that they are using. 